In this section, we're going to look at scalars and vectors. Um, we're going to look at what is the difference between scalars and vectors, and we will be using vectors a lot this year. And so we'll look at how do you work with vectors? How do you add and subtract vectors? So first of all, a scalar quantity is a quantity looking only at the magnitude or number amount. One important thing, magnitude means amount. So many times throughout the year, you will have a problem that says, find the magnitude for some specific thing. And many times people say, well, how do we solve for magnitude? Magnitude is the amount. So it might say, find the magnitude of the velocity. So that just means find the velocity. So when we're looking at scalar, it's going to be almost always a number amount. For example, if I ask someone how to get to Carbondale, if I told them you will go a half a mile, then you'll turn, and then you'll go another three-fourths of a mile, and then you'll go 10 miles, that does not tell them how to get there. It just tells them how many miles they will be traveling. On the other hand, if we look at vector quantities, we're looking at the amount and a direction. So when I'm giving those directions, if I say go a half a mile north, and then I would turn and go east three-fourths three of a mile, that would give direction and tell that person how specifically to go to a certain location. So when we're talking vectors, you have to say the magnitude or amount and direction. But direction doesn't always have to be north, south, east, west. It can be up, down, left, right, positive, negative on a number line. Um, so keep those things in mind that it's not just always going to be north, south, east, west. Arrows will be used to represent our vectors in many of our problems. We will draw arrows to solve lots of problems and those arrows the direction that they point will represent the direction in our vector so we might draw a line and put 10 meters above it and whichever way that arrow is pointing is designating the direction for us typically when we try to draw out our arrows we're going to try to draw them proportionate to the amounts in the problem but of course this may not always be possible. So it's always good to label your arrows as well. If we look at this question, it says there are places where the temperature is positive 20 degrees Celsius one time of the year and negative 20 Celsius at another time of the year. The question says do the plus and minus signs that are designating our positive 20, negative 20, do those imply that we're dealing with vector quantities. So we have to ask ourselves, is the plus giving us a direction here? It is not. It is just indicating that amount. Positive 20 is an amount as is negative 20. So this is a scalar quantity because we're still talking about just amount, not direction. Now we'll look at how do we add and subtract vectors. Typically when we're adding and subtracting, we can just add and subtract the numbers, but here we also have to take into account the direction that those vectors are traveling. So for vector addition, we will do what's called resultant vector and add all of our vectors together. But again, taking into account the direction. With this first example of simple vector addition, we have five miles east, two miles east, and one mile east. So this one will be simple because they're all in the same direction. So I first need to draw out my vectors. So I would draw one vector, five miles east, Then I'm going to switch color just so we can see this a little bit easier. So we have then 
two miles east. And then finally, we have one mile east. So since they're all in the same direction, we would just add those together. So five plus two plus one is gonna give us a total of eight miles east. And if we don't put that east on there, then that doesn't include that direction. So we have to put the east to make it a vector answer. So when we have vectors that may not be going in the same direction, we have to use what's called the head to tail method. And often with the head to tail method, it will result in a triangle. So then we will end up using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the resultant or the addition of those vectors together. So for example, um, on the second bullet, we have add two miles east and three miles north. So if we were to draw that out, we would draw two miles east and then three miles north. So as you can see, we drew one vector and then the next vector started where the last vector left off. So you almost would not even have to pick up your pencil. So that's the head to tail method. Now to find the resultant, we're going to go back to where we started. So we started at this point and then the resultant is where do you start to where do you ultimately end up? So we started here and we ultimately ended here. So the purple is our resultant vector. Now to solve for that, we would simply do two squared plus three squared is going to give me three point six. And that would be miles, but I also need a direction. So to find that direction, I could simply look at this and say, well, it's going to be northeast, but if I want a more specific direction, I need to find this angle. And that angle is always gonna be the angle, again, where did I start at and where am I going? So the angle that's right next to where I started is the angle we're looking for. So if we look at that angle, it's gonna be tangent, and I could really use any, uh, my opposite, which is three, over my adjacent, which is two. So if I plug in inverse tangent of three over two to solve for that, my angle turns out to be 56.3 degrees. Now if we look at this third bullet, we've got four different vectors that we need to add together. One mile east, two miles south, three miles west, and four miles north. So the first thing that we want to do is find the vectors that are going in the same general direction. So like north and south, north and south, and then east and west. So if I look, I've got two miles south and four miles north. If I were to look at that and add those together, that would end up giving me four north and two south would result in two north. So if I draw two north, And then I were to look at the east and west direction. So I have one mile east and three miles west. So that's gonna result in two miles west. So where did I end my last arrow? I'm gonna start my next one. So that is 
two miles west. So again, now I need to find where did I ultimately start and where did I ultimately end? So I started down here and I ended here. So again, we do Pythagorean theorem and two squared plus two squared is going to result in our hypotenuse or x squared and then we solve for x and our resultant ends up being 2.83 and that is miles and now we need to give it a direction so we went northwest but at what angle? So where I started was at this bottom corner. So to find this angle, I could do, again, using tangent of two over two, my angle will result in being a 45 degree angle. So if I type that in my calculator, I'm going to type tangent, do inverse tangent, 2 over 2, and my angle ends up being a 45 degree angle. In this problem, it says a plane flies with a velocity of 52 meters per second east through a 12 meter per second crosswind blowing the plane south. So first we're going to draw the picture. So if we look at this, we've got 52 east. So 52 east. And then a crosswind blows that south. So again, where did we leave off? We're going to draw our arrow south. 12 east. So when we find our resultant, where did we start to where did we ultimately end up? So that is the vector that we need to solve for. It wants direction, magnitude and direction. So magnitude, the amount of that side and direction, which is going to be, oop, this was south, sorry guys, um, so southeast and whatever this angle, because this is the point where we started, so whatever this angle happens to be. So for our side, if we do 52 squared plus 12 squared, that'll give us x squared. So X, if we type into our calculator, gives us 53.37, and that was meters per second. And we're going southeast at, and we need to find our angle. So in our calculator, we'll type inverse tangent of uh, so opposite is 12 over 52 and so my angle turns out to be 12.99 or 13 degrees for our next problem we have a hiker. He walks 25 kilometers west and then 35 kilometers south. So again, where do we leave off? So 35 south 
in a day. We want to find the magnitude and direction of the hiker's displacement. So if we look at our resultant, where did we start to where did we end up? So now we would need to take 25 squared plus 35 squared So 25 squared plus 35 squared, I get an answer of 43.01 kilometers, and that is going to be southwest at, and now we need to find our angle. So that angle, again, is the one where we started. So if we were solving this on the calculator, we need inverse tangent of opposite the angle is 35 over adjacent to the angle of 25. So that angle ends up being 35 point five four degrees so the answer for this problem would kind of be all of this so 43.01 kilometers southwest at 35.54 degrees now if we look at a few more concepts if we look at vector subtraction this would be when we are subtracting vectors, obviously, but basically the vector that you are subtracting, you're just going to multiply by negative one or just turn it in the opposite direction. So instead of having it go east, you would add it as it was going west. Now we're going to look at vector components. So the components of the vector can be broken down and you can add them together. Um, typically you will be given the resultant, which is the hypotenuse of those triangles that we've been looking at, and it will ask you to find the sides of the triangles. So find the um, two legs. So again, we're going to be using sine, cosine, and tangent to find those sides because we'll be given a hypotenuse and an angle. So if we look at this problem, we have a displacement vector R that has a magnitude or an amount of 175 meters and points at an angle 50 degrees relative to the X axis. It wants us to find X and Y for that vector. So the first thing I want to do is draw an axis. So I've drawn my axis there, um, just like a basic x, y axis. And then from there, I will draw my resultant, which is 175 meters that points at an angle of 50 degrees relative to the x axis. So about 50 degrees, start at the middle. So this would be our 50 degrees. And then 175 was my value for my resultant. Now it wants me to find the X and Y components. So if I switch my colors here, so I need the X component. And then I need the Y component. So I can see that the X component is going to be in the east direction and the Y component will be in the north direction. So now it's a matter of using my sine, cosine, tangent. So if I look at the Y, I've got my hypotenuse 
and then this is opposite my angle whereas the bluish purple my x is adjacent so if i'm going to do sine of 50 equals my y over 175. Then my x component would be cosine of 50 equals x over 175. So when we solve for y and x, we'll take 50, sine of 50 times 175, and cosine of 50 times 175. So y equals 134.06, and that's gonna be meters. And then x equals 112.49 meters.